Hello everyone. I'm going to show you a few tricks uh, using Virtual Dub, uh, which you can download at virtualdub.sourceforge.net. And uh, there's a couple of downloads available. There's the 32-bit version, and there's also a 64-bit version. But be aware, it's, they say it's recommended that if you that you use the 32-bit version unless you've got a specific need for 64-bit execution because the 64-bit version can't use the 32-bit codecs or plugins. And I'll just show you what they mean. Like if I go in here under video, compression. You see I've only got a few here. I've got my XVID because that's Jawar's XVID and 64-bit versions installed. And because I've got 64-bit Windows 7, it's got a Microsoft Video 1 and RLE. Uh, so it's got some 64-bit codecs built in. But uh, that doesn't do me a whole lot of good if I need other codecs too. So here's the 32-bit version. And go to the video to compression. And you see I've got my F50 show, got my DivX, Cinepak. So I've got other ones available as well as the ones that I had before, that, but in the 32-bit versions. So just so you know, you most likely want the 32-bit version, okay? All right, so why are we even talking about this... Um, virtual dub stuff anyway. Well, there's two problems that arise. If you one of them, one of the big ones is if you go over the uh, two gigabyte size limit, then you wind up with a file that won't compile. Um, and the poor program crashes, cam studio crashes on you and burns and uh, it won't allow you to record anything. Uh, well, it, well it, what it does is sometimes it actually erases the temp files all together and anyway it crashes pretty bad if it if you still got the temp files you may have something that's rescuable using virtual dub and that's why I'm going to show you how to uh, make sure you've got temp files available and that's why I've got the uh, the Camp Studio 2.0 up also if you ever want to record both by the way Always bring up Camp Studio 2 first, and uh, no, no, always bring up the Camp Studio 2.6 first, and then bring up your 2.0, and then you'll be able to do something like this. Okay, so um, what am I talking about? Let's bring up some folders here. And here you have the temp files that are actually part of this current recording that's going on right now. I have actually gone in and set under the options, program options, and under temporary recording, temp directory for recording, I say use a user specified directory, and I take it over here to this Camp Studio temp files folder. And you see there's a fail safe copies folder, I'll explain that in just a second. So the same thing is true with, uh, with this one that we're using right now. So program options, and they just call it directory for recording, which is a mistake. It should be the temp directory for recording or something like that. Same thing as you had before. It's not where the actual recordings go. It's where the temp files go. And you want to get your user specified directory. If you want to tell it where to put the end result, you, that's under name of AVI file. And you tell it and ask for file name. And that's the default anyway. So when you hit stop, it asks you where you want to save the file. Okay. But as far as the temp files, use user specified directory, and that way you'll be able to do what I'm about to do here. All right, so here we have our fail safe copies. Let's go ahead and we'll make a short recording using um, this program. And uh, so now you see it's making a temp AVI file. And I go ahead and I push stop. And it comes up with the um, requester, okay? And notice it's got the WAV file and the AVI. Okay, so before I hit save, come up here to my folder and click the AVI just once, and then hold down Control and click the WAV also. And then right click and drag it over here into Fail Safe Copies, a folder that I've made. You want to make something like that, and select Copy here. There you go, now you've got a copy in here that if you have a problem you've got something you can rescue with virtual dub okay so then you go ahead and you say save you give it a name 
temp uh, file here and um, and you say save and it saves it and opens it and uh, so go. now you see it's making a temp ABI file and I go ahead and I push stop there you go so you see it worked I didn't have a problem I wasn't over two gigabytes and now I've got that fail safe in there you'll notice it's gotten rid of the temp files in here and that's the problem is that sometimes it crashes and doesn't leave any temp files behind so now I'd have something that I'd be able to fall back on in the fail safe copies folder that I could load into virtual dub if I needed to okay so okay so how would you rescue this stuff so let me close out this uh, file that I had open just so I'd have something to show here we go and uh, you go to open video file and you go to where your files are in this case we're going to go to the temp files folder into our fail safe copies and get our temp avi okay and um and load her in and so there's the thing now there's nothing wrong with this one of course so it's going to load in just fine all right so i showed you one that loads in just fine let's close this now though and show you what you, you do what you would do if you really had a problem and uh, so you would go to open video file and you've got your file that you want to open but this time look at this on the bottom ask for extended options after this dialogue you want to check that box because it's going to ask you for more things to do and click on open and now look what you've got you've got some some selections here um, the one you're interested in is rederive keyframe flags in particular because the temp file is saved without any keyframes at all and that's why it won't play in a media player so it will synthesize some keyframe flags for you also you might as a, if the first attempt doesn't work try open in avi file compatibility mode and perhaps disable optimized streaming to save memory especially if you're low on memory okay so you would check these guys and um, and then hit OK. And it will go through a whole process, which I'm not going to do because even as short as this video was, it's very memory intensive and it would probably crash my making this video. But it does make something that opens up if you're just a little bit over two gigabytes. If you're closer to three gigabytes or heaven forbid four gigabytes, this probably won't work. Then you're kind of out of luck and uh, even virtual dub can't save you. All right. So now you know that part. Um, what's the other thing that makes this all useful? Um, the other thing that makes this all useful is if you've got a situation like happened here. There we go. This is a uh, post from the uh, forums. And let's go over to YouTube and uh, see this video. And you'll see it's all slanted and crooked. And the reason it's slanted and crooked is because it was recorded with Camp Studio lossless, which doesn't seem to care what the width and height are of a video. However, you do have limitations at YouTube. That it's going to be converting everything to MPEG. And so it's going to force the thing to be even numbered width and even number height. But it does it kind of strangely, at least with Camp Studio lossless files and winds up creating a skewed thing because it's off by a pixel in the width and height and makes up those pixels in some kind of an odd way. You can resize the original. You can't resize the MPEG because um, virtual dub doesn't work on MPEG files. You've got to do it to the AVI file in your virtual dub. Okay, so let's bring up virtual dub again and let's just imagine this file was off by uh, that one pixel and we wanted to fix it. Well, the way you can fix it is you go into video and make sure full processing mode is selected and select filters. Okay, now before I go into that, let's just show you in compression what I meant by the even thing. You'll notice under FFD show, for instance, width must be a multiple of two, height must be a multiple of two. This is true of MPEG4 files. And DivX makes it even more complex. You've got to have width be a multiple of four. 
and the height must be a multiple of two and only allows 24-bit color or 32-bit color. Uh, that's actually true of most MPEG things. They want 24-bit color or 32-bit color. Uh, XFIT, I'm pretty sure, has the... Yeah, it does. have the. Uh, it also has the limitation. It's got to be even numbers, or you'll get that dreaded um, request to use the default compressor, which won't work for you, believe me. And uh, it tries to go to something like Microsoft Video 1. But... Anyway, you don't want that. You want to be using XVID. You don't want a default compressor. And the reason usually is because you're off by a pixel in size. So no known restrictions is not true. It's just because they haven't added some little flag in there that would have informed a uh, virtual dub of what the actual situation was. Okay, so there, there you have that. Let's go back to the video. Again, you want full processing mode. You go to filters and... Let's see, let me yeah, just delete this so that you can see me add. You hit, click on the add button, okay? And you go, it takes you to a list of filters. And you see there's a whole bunch of different filters, do everything, the interlays, emboss, uh, field swap, all kinds of stuff. Grayscale, uh, change the hue saturation, um, adjustment, all kinds of stuff. But the one you're interested in is resize. So we're not actually, it's not actually called crop. It's called resize. All right. So you open that up and you'll see it's got a, uh, a, a thing here. Well, this one already is 1280 by 720. Let's take one of that's messed up. Let's actually open up a file that's messed up instead of this one. And I'll close this and we'll go ahead and we'll open up uh, one that I made on purpose to be a little bit kind of goofed up and uh, put it in here I believe yes show crop method and this one I made using um, Microsoft video one to be a little bit smaller actually it's funny because I made it one pixel too small and Microsoft video one changed the uh, dimensions to some kind of strange that I didn't expect but you'll see, uh, let me again get rid of it. Well, we already got this added. But heck, let's go through the whole process. So you hit add, you go down, you get your resize. And see, it's it's came in as 1276 by 716, even though um, I had said 7, 1279 by 719. <laughs> and Microsoft Video 1 managed to chop a few pixels off to force it to be even. So that's probably a good thing, isn't it? But uh, Cam Studio lossless would not have done that. It would have left it at the 1279 by 719 and the whole thing would have not uploaded very well and you would have got that skewing. Okay. So we don't want relative. We go to absolute pixels and let's, we want 1280 by 720. So you have to turn off the aspect ratio say disabled and actually type in 720 and now you got a legit 1280 by 720 HD video that will upload just fine to YouTube I would pick something instead of precise by cubic maybe the Lancos which is a really nice um, it's a better algorithm for a lot of things and that's pretty much all you got to got to do. And you notice multiples of two codec friendly sizing. You can say code multiples of two, multiples of four for DivX. Yeah, see. So anyway, then you just hit that and it does the processing. It brings in that filter. You can remember you can you can add a bunch of filters and they'll all get assigned at once. And uh, there is cropping, but remember cropping is going to make it smaller and it's already too small by a pixel or two. So you're going to want to resize to go up, okay? Not crop to go down. All right, so you hit OK, and it does its thing, and it resizes it, and then you go in here to say save as AVI, and uh, and just save it. Whoops. Well, that was great. My, uh, my mouse messed, uh, messed me up here. So you go into Save as API, and uh, I already gave this a name, Show Crop Method Fixed. And uh, so the whole idea, you get it. 
now that's uploadable I can make a a, uh, a YouTube upload and it won't be skewed again there's no way in virtual dub to fix the actual YouTube version because it's already it's an MPEG 3 MPEG 4 and virtual dub does not work with MPEG files only with AVIs okay well let's see so that covered a lot of ground and I hope I didn't put everybody to sleep that this was really interesting to anybody who really needed it and um, yeah, those are, there are those occasions that you really need these little rescue things. Uh, virtual Dub goes a lot deeper than what I've showed you, but, um, you know, feel free to explore it. There's lots of better tutorials that go into other aspects of what it can do. It's got a ton of filters, and you can also um, use it to apply compression to the audio. As you know, I always recommend to people that in the audio options for a microphone, that they always have use MCI recording checked so that they're using the system audio and that uh, of course under the video options that they're making sure that these two fields capture frames every and playback rate when you multiply them they should equal a thousand so it equals one second since you can't put in you can't put in 30 because you can't put in 33.33 this doesn't accept decimals yet um, so stick with things that when multiplied, come to a thousand, and use MCI to record, and your audio sync will be good. Now, then you can come into Virtual Dub, into the audio, and if it's got audio, you can uh, you have to say instead of direct stream copy, you have to switch to full processing mode, and then the compression becomes there where you can use that, and you can. Uh, apply MPEG layer 3 which is MP3 I actually found ADPCM uh, holds sync a lot better and so does GSM 610 although that'll force it to be a mono I'm pretty sure uh, GSM is the same thing used in your cell phones now that's really a good one it's a new thing as far as being available for us to use and it seems to sync really well, but I haven't really tested it to see how well it works in all all media players. Um, Microsoft ADPCM should certainly work in all media players. It's been around for 100 years. And as an explanation of how the ADPCM actually works on my screencasttutorials.org website, if you want to find that, you're really feeling geeky today. Uh, so anyway, there you go. I hope that's helpful. Um, subscribe to the channel, get more stuff. Uh, go to screencasttutorial.org. It's all one word. Um, and you'll find a whole bunch of articles and stuff like that. Of course, like this video if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. And comments I respond to usually pretty fast, like within the day. Uh, or messages that you send directly to me at YouTube. I'm also at the Cam Studio Forums, which is camstudio.org slash forum. And uh, yeah, I'm always there to answer people's questions too. And so no question is difficult, or as they say, uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question, only stupid people who ask questions. No, well, thank you, Joe Polish, that's one of his. All right, hey, take care, and I uh, hope this helped you a little bit and gets you rolling if you had a crisis. And uh, But hopefully everything is rolling really well for you that you've watched all my other videos and uh, you're just flying with Cam Studio and making one video after the next. Okay, take care.